Hey Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over part two of the chart prime suite of uh, professional indicators. And today I have OC Guy from Chart Prime. He's going to walk us through uh, the, uh, the uh, Oracle Pro. And so guys, we already uh, looked at some of the uh, indicators in previous episodes and we will have uh, one more uh, follow-up. But uh, yeah, OC guy, can you just uh, please uh, describe the Oracle Pro to us and walk us through the settings? Absolutely, Alpha Sky, my pleasure to do it. So let's get started by adding the indicator you could be using or finding that indicator when you are subscribed. Make sure that you go into the invite only scripts and then scroll down to look for the market Oracle Pro. It's going to be looking like that. You'll see that I have a bunch more indicators. Don't pay attention to those because they usually are sent to us as we start developing them. And so we can start testing them early and also bring back some um some uh information back to the developers but at this point you're going to be having something like this all right so there's a couple of tips and tricks that i want to point out before moving forward into how to use them and that is how to properly configure it since this is a pro grade um pro grade uh i just fought on my mind sorry uh, the, since this is a pro it's grade indicator. indicator, there it has some, <laughs> it got a little bit uh, corners that we need to go over. So the first thing that, that we're going to be going over is basically how to set up your trend mode. So I'm going to be go clicking on the settings. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at, it is our signal modes. You'll see that we have trend mode and reversal mode. Just as a, as a quick uh, understanding, there are predictive and reactive tools in our suite. The predictive tools are based on predictive mathematics. Basically, uh, taking a look at how or how things are reacted, we put it into a math equation, and then we try through a statistics try to predict how things are going to be reacting up in the future. That will to give you kind of like a farther away point of view on where things might be happening or getting ready to happen. And then we also have reactive tools, right? Just like trend mode that is based on the reaction of breaking some, breaking some key supports or having some key uh, differences that based on, on the same equation or it's the same equation of a reactive tool, we're going to be plotting you the best possible scenario for a change of trend. So let's get started with the trend mode to make it things easier. And then we'll go over take profits and max profits. And also if something very important, which is uh, which are the reversal. Just so you know, trend mode, it is a reactive signal system. So the first question most everybody have or many people have is the tuning, right? So how, how can I change it? Is it worth changing it? I do have max out of um, auto maximizer how do you use that well in this case i'm going to take advantage of going a little bit in depth on how to find your best tuning because that is usually the best case scenario for your way of working with the indicators if you are trying to make it quick you can be using the auto maximizer and then just taking a look at low uh frequency and high frequency and looking for the best case scenario for your for your style. Nonetheless, at this point, we're going to be looking at how to find your best tuning section. So for that, I'm going to be using the dashboard. Really quickly there, OC guy, because uh, we should yep. uh, bring it back home for the viewers. But uh, the point of tuning is because you can, of course, accept an indicator just right out of the box, but it may not be perfect for your chart. And, uh, you know, some of the best indicators out there, they allow you to fine tune it. Um, based upon your own needs. And so every chart has a slightly different characteristic to it, has a different uh, algorithm, it has a different uh, fractal to it. And uh, by fine tuning, you're able to, you know, step back, zoom out on the chart and see um, which setting and you can dial it in yourself uh, is optimal for you, for your needs, uh, you know, when you're using uh, this product. And that's a really neat feature because um, most indicators don't give you that ability. You just have to have a one size fits all. And so I really appreciate um, that aspect. And OC guy, what would you say is the number one problem that the Oracle Pro is solving? Of course, uh, with the Oscillator Pro, which we already took a look at, uh, you were looking for uh, entries and uh, perhaps exits also. Um, is that also what you're looking for with this one or uh, what does the uh, Oracle Pro uh, provide? 
The Oracle Pro, yes, give you uh, entries and exits, but most importantly, give you the trend. Because as you already have mentioned, the trend is your friend until the end, right? And in most cases, going with the trend will get you not only more opportunities, but also the best case scenario for a very profitable trade. So that is what is tr uh, the market oracle trying to give you, like the sense of how the market is moving. And also when we look at the reversal signals, also a heads up on where we could be having one quick uh, low uh, immediate short term reaction to reversing the market. So you can take maybe some profits or also maximize your, your strategy based on the trend. And then the signal mode that you have is the trend mode, uh, which is in right now. And so essentially uh, you have buy and sell uh, flags on the uh, chart. And that essentially is signifying um, the start of an uptrend, uh, some type of confirmation of an uptrend. And then the sell is a confirmation of a potential downtrend, right? And I also noticed that you have yes. strong flags on it. Occasionally, uh, I see a green strong. And then if we zoomed out, perhaps we could see a red strong. And what's the difference between uh, the uh, two flags? So basically, you are completely correct on that. We're trying to give you the heads up on when the trend changes. And the difference between the sell and buy signals are basically when the question is telling us that we could could have a bigger uh, reaction to it. Like for example, let's take a look at this portion here. As you can see, we have a cell and then we have a little uh, reactions to it, right? We also, we do have a strong buy and we have a little bit of a, of a lower reaction, but that is because we also have down here a downwards moving on a loose of that momentum on the oscillator. But once we have a very strong reaction down on the oscillator and we have a breakthrough on a possible change of trend as we see here, we're going to have an, a strong signal. In that strong signal, you'll see that it really plays out. So basically, we classified on based on the trend uh, when we believe or when the algorithm believes that it could have a very uh, impactful reaction based on the trend change. Of course, it's great when you start pairing it with your oscillator and having those oversold zones, reversals, and also, most importantly, those breakthrough, those zero lines. And right, a so quick it's a tip, good, we it's just good to mention that no uh, one indicator can do everything. And so uh, using the other indicators, for example, the uh, the uh, oscillator pro as a point of confluence, you can see that where you circled on the oscillator, it's on the uh, macro green band at the bottom, indicating that that's uh, very highly overbought on a high level. And then you also have a strong signal on the Oracle Pro where you have that strong buy signal. And together, that confluence indicated uh, you know, a, a strongest possibility for an entry there. Whereas on some of these other flags that it has buy, sell, strong, they may have been um, kind of front running a potential move, but they weren't necessarily supported um, by a point of confluence, uh, which is the oscillator. And these do come packaged together in the uh, suite of products. So uh, just understand that you do get them together and you can use them together uh, to make um, each indicator work stronger together. And that's, uh, it's a complete system in that sense. Yes, that is correct. Another quick little tip that I want to give up. Once we configure these indicators, usually we don't enter right away on the signals since having a retest usually potentialize the, mo the momentum of that trend. We usually wait for that retest, but we'll see that when we configure the signals and eliminate the confluence that maybe on my style I'm having on the charts. Mm -hmm. And then when you did um, go back to the settings, uh, we could see that you uh, were trying to find um, a, a tuning that worked well for you. And right now you have it set at 14, which is just the default. But uh, what you found, at least for Bitcoin, right, is that you found that 43 works really well with BTC. And you trade primarily on the four hour. So this is something that you discovered through your own hard work. And so what would it look like if we changed it to 43 on the tuning? 
Absolutely. For that, let me first of all bring out something very important, which is going to be my reactor. So I'm going to be turning on my dynamic reactor and then just give it one second for it to load. The dynamic reactor looks like a VWAP or a EMA, but the, it is not one of those things. It is a high volume area. And then bear with me here because I'm going to be going after here after a piece of chart that I'm looking for where I can very, very clearly see when I have upranging, downranging, or uptrending, downtrending, sideways market, and again, downtrending. And let me bring to your attention something interesting. Once we break through that a dynamic reactor, we usually take several tries before we break it back through. Once we break it back through, again, it takes several times. Once again, we break it back through. And we could be start using this uh, dynamic reactor to start understanding where our uh, brain could maybe be catching those trends by identifying them like that. And let me now go over my suggested uh, numeric value here on the tuning, and that is 43. And I first went over the dynamic reactor, not only because it's one of the most important tools in here, but also look at the coincidence that I'm having, that confluence also that I'm having while breaking through the dynamic reactor and now having a strong signal. So now you can see that I have effectively eliminated many, if not all of the interference that I had previously. And right, now false, I can see the very false signals clean. signals have been reduced significantly. So uh, just to, uh, you know, restate uh, what OC Guy was just saying is, you know, try to find a section of the chart that you're looking at. You may be looking at a, a stock, you may be looking at crypto, but uh, try to find an area of the chart where you can see a very powerful uptrend and a very powerful downtrend and maybe a series of them. Like we can obviously see here, we had a downtrend, uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, and it's a very clear, right? Very clear areas. And then what you want to do when you're using the tuning uh, aspect of the indicator is, of course, you could just use auto tuning if you want and just take it out of the box. But uh, there's an additional piece of intelligence that you're able to use, which is to tune it so that it primarily captures the big moves. And then uh, what uh, OC guy found here is that he found uh, where a strong move uh, is basically bookending two sides of an impulse. And then uh, it's also doing it on the next influence, uh, the next impulse. And so it looks like that's a pretty good tuning for perhaps uh, this chart or at least this area of the chart. And while there may still continue to be some noise, that can be filtered out using, um, you know, confluence with, for instance, another indicator like oscillator, the oscillator at the bottom or uh, whatnot. And at the same time, he's showing you the green and red ribbon, which is showing the, uh, the those trends. And so what you're looking for is where, uh, what tuning, at what tuning do the flags kind of bookend those, those uh you know, those trends of green and red the most. And that's going to be your ideal setting. Is Did I state that correctly? Yes, that is correct. Although I also have a little process on finding it. I don't know if you would like me to go over it or maybe we can go into another different tool. Let me know. Uh, well, no, I'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like if you're starting from scratch, uh, the first thing that I do suggest to doing is turning on your um, your dashboard, right? So the first thing I'm looking at is going to be my optimal tuning. Well, my dashboard right now, it's all the way down to my right. And since I do, do content creation, I like to have it right here at the center middle. So feel free to put it whatever you like, right? So at this point, my dashboard size is going to be an automatic. And then I also want to do bottom middle here. And you will see that it will change right away to the center of my screen at the bottom. And then also just for fun, I'm going to be turning on my prime score and my consolidation score that we'll take a look at in a minute in here. So at this point, remember that Previously, let's just think that I'm looking at new coin, right? So this new coin, I don't know anything about it, and I'm trying to find a tuning that works for me. So I'm going to be using the optimal tuning, which is a mathematical more accurate for a machine to have that sensitivity. So therefore, as a starting point, because remember, I'm not a machine, I'm a human, and my brain might be formed differently from you and I, and we could be looking at things slightly different or very big 
uh, with a very big difference, right? So as a starting point, as a regulatory system, we can start doing or using whatever tuning is in here, all right? Once we have clicked on this one, uh, sorry, place this tuning that is the same as this one and click away, very important, make sure you turn off your auto maximizer if you have it. I'm also just because for sake of saving space, I'm gonna be turning off my optical tuning since I don't longer need it. And as you can see, you're gonna have, yes, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good configuration. So far, this is looking very nice, but I believe like, for example, here, I could make it a little bit better or in here, I can make it a little bit better. So what I'm gonna start doing is to start increasing this tuning to the very next round number, 28, it's closer to 30. So I'm gonna get started with 30 and then start rising in 10 increments until I see something that really works for me. Uh, usually I go all the way to 40 and on 40, I start relating to what I see and what I like to trade. Like for example, you can see it now very clearly, right? So you can see a very nice and big uh, swing trade or trend also in here, but I still have this um, this interference zone right there. So that's when I start increasing by one or two increments, and that is what I get my 43 tuning that I usually like around Bitcoin. Uh, something important that we were talking about uh, a little bit um, uh, after or in the previous section, it was that the tuning, the scene needs to change with every single coin or with every single time frame, and the answer is no. Once you set it up, because remember, you're setting this up with how your brain works, it will basically carry on along the same zone of your time frame and also the same kind of assets. Like, for example, if I go to daily, I'll find very nice and very neat uh, structures on my uh, on my uh, buy and sell signals. Like, for example, look at that as we break through beautiful, strong signal, and I have multiple chances of going up and grabbing right. those shorts, right? And I'll just, and point, out, as I'll I just break... point out the uh, strong sell signal right there before the COVID dip, and then the, uh, oh. the strong buy right after the COVID dip. And, uh, you know, those yes. were probably <laughs> two times you wanted to have those signals on your chart, you know? So, uh, yeah, and then also in uh, 2021, after we reached the peak, you know, obviously, um, you know, we you it didn't give the signal at the very top, but at least it told you to get out before the majority of the drop. And then it also had that strong buy signal um, at the bottom. Now, of course, uh, you know, no signal it can uh, really catch the absolute bottom or the absolute top because um, they have to wait for confirmations, right? And it's usually humans, right? It's, it's humans who are just really experienced in trading that we try to front run things and we imagine those things. But um, the system seems to be more about um, confirming a trend and then allowing you to um, be more confident in your trading along with the oscillator. And then as we'll find out in the third segment, the Dynamics Pro, which is an incredibly powerful suite of products there. Absolutely, and talking exactly about that, what you mentioned is completely correct, which is that we're not trying to catch the absolute top or absolute bottom. We're trying to catch the most efficient trend, right? So a trend, and this is textbook, only changes after breaking certain metrics, right? So your trend did not change at the very top. It changed after breaking a trend line, right? Or a certain metric. So we're trying to optimize that uh, knowledge put it into a, a mathematical expression, and then plotting the, the absolute best trend uh, system. But also, and very importantly, we are generating predictive mathematics. And let me show you here, if I go to trend and then add reversal, now reversal, bear in mind that this is the sign, or the trend mode is the sign for long lasting, big, huge trends, right? big movements and reversal is the sign to give you possibilities where we have immediate change of reaction. So basically uh, the reversal is constantly looking at the market and when it gathers enough information that resembles a reversal, well, it's gonna be telling you, hey buddy, take a look at here because based on the predictive mathematics that we're having, the perfect storm could be starting at this point. So take a look at your oscillator, take a look at your support resistances, because this could be the spot. So I'm gonna click okay, and look at those 
uh, signals that we had there. So as you can see, there are very, very close to tops and bottoms, right? So again, as you mentioned, uh, based on math, we always need to have a little, uh, let's call it wiggle room or threshold because there is not always a, an exact volume that um, and this is one perfectly of my describes. favorite parts of the uh, Oracle Pro. Uh, I love that you have the uh, reversal uh, points marked in there. Um, I, and even if it's predictive, you can see that you know sometimes the uh, buy and sell are a little bit late because they're waiting for confirmations, but then the reversal is kind of front running it and trying to predict when the chart will turn around. And so you have the best of two worlds if you just put in just a little bit of effort to try to do the fine tuning, um, which, and there's you know three ways to do the tuning on this indicator, which is it's just right out of the box settings, and then it has a recommended one. It also has uh, an optimizer. And then I guess there's a fourth way, of course, which you can do it manually. And so it's just a uh, very powerful to be able to fine tune this yourself and then you get um, not only the trend but also the potential reversals. Would you mind explaining what the prime score is? Absolutely. So the prime score is basically the cheat code to knowing or understanding whether we're bullish or bearish. Like let me give you a little of uh, how do I teach it on the classes and for that since we're getting a little bit cluttered here let me start removing a couple of of stuff so we don't get confusing here. So let's go to trend mode again and then go all the way back at the end because that is what our prime score is telling me, right? So my prime score is basically a gathering of information of all of the suite that we have on the market Oracle Pro and then calculating where are we heavy weighted, right? Either to the upside or to the downside. So I usually ask uh, my, my alumni whether we're bullish or bearish by asking three questions. The first question number one is are we above or below the dynamic reactor? Because we already have seen that breaking through it usually takes several tries to break back above or below, right? The next one is that I tell my, uh, my alumni, uh, guys, are we above or below the zero line on the oscillator? And at this point, we are below. And right here in our dynamic reactor, we're technically below, right? And then to finalize it, what candle color, what signal do we have? So as you can see, we are red on signal, so one bearish point, all right? Then we're also below dynamic reactor, one bearish point, and we are below our zero line. Again, another bearish point. So the prime score goes from one to 10. All right, so I usually tend to not take it into consideration because uh makes, I mean, when you're 10, you are definitely need to start taking some actions there. But usually it breaks through after or be, right before uh, we hit 10. So one, two, and three. Uh, one, two, and three usually indicates that I'm bearish. And then uh, four, five and six usually indicates that I am neither bearish or bullish. So I could be expecting a ranging zone like this one. And then seven, eight and nine, it's telling me that I'm bullish and I could be, or I should be looking for bullish entries as long as my oscillator is also either flipping up or breaking through that zero line. So here it goes, something that I um, usually do. I usually start on number five, right? So from five, then I have a sell signal. So that's one bearish point. So I'm gonna go to four. And then from four, I'm below the zero line. So I'm gonna go to three, right? And then from three, what else? I'm below dynamic reactor. Therefore, I'm gonna go to two. And usually that is very close to our prime score. So as you can see, it gathers information from the market oracle and then gives you the straight away answer whether we are more bullish or more bearish, right? Just a quick reminder, every bullish trend has its end and it reverses. Every bearish trend has its end and also reverses. Right. So it is kind of just like a cheat code. And of course, it can't be perfect either. But, um, you know, if you're just a little bit confused and you need a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of a nudge or uh, something to uh, kind of help you make your decision, uh, these type of indications uh, can be your friend and maybe can save you from time to time from 
perhaps after a very long uptrend, you may just be overly emotionally uh, bullish, right? And it can be just a friendly reminder uh, to be realistic, right? Of course, you're gonna have to use your own logic when trading, but um, these type of reminders are very helpful, especially when you're just learning trading or um, especially when you're very new, right? And you're, you're kind of being led by your emotions. These type of indications can really help save your butt from time to time. Now, how about the uh, consolidation score? Uh, currently we have a seven on there, so it's saying a high consolidation. Exactly, so the, our consolidation score is basically telling us how uh, possible or how probable we are to be in or getting into a range also tells us uh, if we are into a range and we, if we should be taking advantage of the range and also will be telling us whether we are close to be breaking that range. So again, it oscillates from one to 10. Usually the 10, again, I don't consider it because when we're hitting 10, again, that is most likely we are almost there and it's about to blow up, right? But usually we see a reaction or eight and nine. So one, two, and three, we are continuing the trend and we are not consolidating. Then four, five, and six, basically is telling us that we are in a consolidation and we could be taking advantage of longing the bottom and shorting the top. Usually, uh, not financial advice, but usually I do try to engage in a hedging strategy when we are in a range to take advantage of that oscillating system, right, that we have there. And then seven, eight, and nine, it's basically we are at the end of the range and you should be preparing for the outcome of that range. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as you can see right now, we are at seven and we are almost at the end of that range. That range has been already going for a long time. It seems that it could be breaking soon. Right, so that's actually a very uh, uh, interesting description because I didn't understand that previously. And so uh, that does make a lot of sense. You know, if you're going to do range trading, then pay attention to that uh, consolidation score uh, because your range could be coming to a conclusion the higher that number gets. So that's very uh, interesting uh, perspective there. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for showing uh, those features. Now, are there any other settings that you'd like to go over for the Oracle Pro? Absolutely. Let's take a look at a couple of more settings. So the first thing I want to point out, and this is completely based on how you, you like things to look, it is, let me zoom in, that we're going to be having a couple of different colors in the candles, right? So those colors in the candles are telling you, hey, watch it, because we could be be close to reversing if we're in a range or changing or bouncing if we are not in a range and we are in a trend. Like for example, you will see that right here, since I'm bullish, when I start turning purple, I'm getting to a support, right? And then when I start turning very, very green, then I start reversing. So that kind of color will tell you how like it's like a heat map right how overextended we are and the farther the greater that color the brighter the color is is that we are getting into an end of that possible uh section there so for me i like to have things a little bit more simple and for that i'm going to go over my market oracle and you can change those on the ca candle highlights so i like trend static because that is plain green and red. That takes away that purple zone. Why? Because I started using something like my dynamic reactor and my support and resistance and my predictive ranges to understand whether I'm overextended or not. But if you are heavily into uh, to, uh, price action and you like to kind of like a light up or lighting up your, your charts, you can start changing your trend static or your Japanese default into trend gradient. So that's one one thing that I that I, I want to show. And Another Japanese important default, thing. Japanese default is just uh, regular candle colors, right? Exactly. Exactly. Let me just put it up so we can see it. So Japanese default, waiting a little bit for that little eye to stop moving around. And we can see that it's just right. classical and so, uh, uh, mint just... and red. Just to kind of uh, bottom line that aspect of the um, indicator, this is how you can control your emotions by, you can self-control, you can give yourself some type of a feedback. So you had one um, 
one setting where, for for instance, all the all the uh, candles that are in an uptrend, they were all green. And the reason you do that is so that you don't bias yourself to the downside because you're in an uptrend, right? Why would you want to be biased to the downside? So if every other candle is red, you know, what a lot of new traders, the problem that they have with their emotions is that they see one red candle and they feel like, oh no, we're going to die, right? The whole chart's going to fall over. But in reality, yes. the indicator <laughs> is helping you control your emotions. It's saying, no, no, friend, we're still in an uptrend. Don't worry about it, right? As long as you got a good entry, you know, we're doing okay. Okay. And then, of course, the uh, heat map one, right, uh, just get, if kind of is, is the middle ground, right? It doesn't change every other candle, but it just gives you a little sense of that. Yeah, we're starting to turn around, you know. You might want to be on guard and start protecting your positions or thinking about those strategies. And so uh, that's a, a nice aspect to have in terms of your own personal psychology and being able to control that. And so let's see, we did uh, go over the dashboard position. Um, I wanted to go over the uh, reactor. And then I also know that you have uh, something called the uh, multi time frame uh, reactor. Uh, would you be able to go over those with us? Absolutely. Let's get started first with the reactor, because since I already have shown you the dynamic reactor, we also have the volume flex reactor. So the volume flex reactor is our, is our previous version of the reactor, but added and fitted with volume. So you'll see that it does changes from the uh, now flagship reactor. And what I use it for is to generate a gap between the both of the reactors to give me a threshold zone to enter and exit. So another thing important on the reactor is that you're going to be seeing increasing on size when we have volume. So like, for example, if we see the price going down and we see it a very thin, well, then that means that that zone doesn't have too much volume and we could be breaking that zone. But in other cases, let me zoom in here so we can see it. Oh, trading view is not cooperating. <laughs> here we go. And you see, and as we go down, we start Are you seeing able thickening. to uh, change the well, color then, of it? It's a little bit um, pale on the screen. No, so far we're not able to, ch to change the color of it. Okay. But uh, we could be, I could be color, uh, suggesting but... that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because if you have a dark background or a blue background, it might be invisible, right? But. Um... Oh, yeah. Uh, so just for the mobile users who might not be able to see it, there's a, a thin uh, blue line that's going across the screen and it actually gets thicker in some parts. And yeah, if you really zoom in, you can see it quite clearly. If it gets thicker, that suggests that there's more volume there and probably uh, the momentum to the downside, for example, if we were going to head towards it could get slowed. And you can see that we got a nice wick bounce off of that area. Um, however, if it was just very thin, what he's saying is that it's almost like a, you know, a thin little spider web and it could easily break and you could pass straight down through it. And so this could suggest where um, you may have more strength. And so that's an alternative to the uh, other band. Um, so thank you for showing that. Um, and this was the older version, right? Yeah, that was a previous mathematical equation. And we added, since we renewed all of our indicators on the back end, we made them so much robust and also packed so many new uh, mathematics inside of them. So despite they tend to look at a little bit the same, since we don't want to completely, uh, you know, like I change the way they work, but we are keep improving the back end of the indicators by uh, renewing the mathematics, making them uh, more robust more um, accurate and we just keep pushing it. So despite that, this reactor is still playing out very, very nicely. That's why we decided to keep it and improve it by adding volume on thickness on this uh, on this reactor. Okay, and then how about uh, enabling multi? Oh, you can have both. Absolutely. Yeah, well, the multi is gonna only affect into the, the classic reactor, the dynamic reactor, the green and red one. Uh, and this is going to be interpreted on the on the dashboard. Let me show you. Like I'm going to be uh, first of all configuring before we enable it, right? So let's say that I want to look at the four hour, all right? But I also want to see what's happening in the lower time frames because a, a big reaction on the lower time frames could be the beginning of a trade on the higher time frame. Like for example, I'm seeing I'm very red, so 
Oh, when I start maybe breaking the reactor in here and I go back and forth in here on that retest, well, then maybe on the four hour, I'll be, look at that, confirming that entry back at this section and uh, basically having a very nice entry there. And also, maybe on the daily, my reactor might be far away and I could be having, in case of a breakdown, I could be having a little bit of a way to go if I do not reverse right away, right? So that is basically kind of like the point of view on not having to go back and forth on the time frames. Therefore, uh, we can have it in an organized way uh, right here. Like, for example, let me now do uh, time frame number one will be, I don't know, let's say one hour. And time frame number two could be something like the daily. And probably time frame number three could be something different. Like, would you mind suggesting any time frame? Well, let's just use the four hour since we're on the four hour. So we can use the one hour, the four hour, and the daily. Perfect. Let's do then the four hour. So where is it? Here we go. The four hour. Although it's going to be duplicated, then let's take a look at this four hour and then the other one daily. Oh, we so we can have weekly. it in. We could do the weekly also if you just want to see uh, oh, yeah. the time frame. Because we're also Absolutely. macro, right? We also have to consider our macro situation. We were, exactly. macro yes. we were macro bearish for a long time. And then people were in disbelief, right? When we started to turn around because they were still bearish. But uh, this type of reactor, it can kind of give you an indication. So I'm now seeing an extra um, set of uh, indications on the bottom of that uh, dashboard. And I can see 60 minutes says bearish, one day says bullish, one week says bullish. And so it's kind of reminding you that, you know, on the daily, things aren't so bad. On the weekly, uh, things are bullish, right? It's just that we're kind of turning around right now. And, you know, depending on what time frame you're trading on, uh, you know, these may be some important considerations. And I really like this feature. Uh, because, you know, whenever we're trading, whether it's on the 15 minute or whether it's on the daily, or even if you're just a macro swing trader, uh, like I am primarily, then you want to see what's going on around you, right? And so if you're on the 15 minute trading, you might want to see what's going on on the five minute and maybe the hourly, because small things can turn into big things. And then also you have to understand that those bigger time frames can kind of push the chart quite heavily. Uh, quite rapidly. And so some type of a change on the higher time frame can just swoop you up into it. And also some type of, um, you know, really important change on the small time frame can spill over into your current time frame unexpectedly if you're not checking the lower time frames uh, quite often. And so I love this feature. Uh, I think this is just a, an amazing feature that is a necessity, <laughs> right? Because we don't switch back yes. and forth between our time frames often enough, right? Exactly, yes. And if you're liking that, it would just wait until we get to the prime screener. I think you're going to love it. <laughs> but in the meantime, I have another two things that I want to show you around, which are very, very nice. And I tend to use them almost every single day on my personal trading. So those are another predictive tools. Like we have momentum wave bands. This is a reactive, right? Well, reactive and predictive. Today is a combination of both. Candle structure would give you uh, candle patterns or candle formations and prime ranges and prime trend assistance. I would like to go over the prime ranges and prime trend assistance because those are the most used, that the ones that I use the most. But uh, let me know if you want me to start with any in particular or we, we, if we should be jumping right you know away what? into uh, the prime Since ranges we've done the other bands, I think let's do the momentum wave bands because I like this one. Um, I use the uh, the uh, TDIM, I believe it's <laughs> TDIM, and the um, and also Bollinger Bands. And so when we look at this um, this kind of interesting kind of structure that you guys have built using your algorithm, um, it reminds me a lot of Bollinger Bands, and it reminds me a lot of uh, the uh, the TD on uh, the RSI. And so when we're looking at this in confluence with other bands, I found that there was very interesting confluence. And uh, I do like how easy it is to see that we've almost got like this kind of wormhole structure and where you're hitting the tops, you're seeing these uh, very powerful reversals going on um, on this band. So can you just walk us through this one and uh, just uh, teach us a couple tricks with it? 
because it's also uh, absolutely with the uh, reactor band right in the middle there. So yes, that is an amazing. I in fact, a uh, point of confluence that I used to use a lot. I try to not use it that much on my personal trading or when I teach it because it tends to be a little bit cloudy. And what I instead do, I layer them out. I'll show you a little bit on how I layer my indicators farther away. But these bands are top tier. And let me show you why. They have four different uh, aspects that they are very, very important. The first of the first of those are the bands themselves, right? So we see two different bands in there. Those bands are basically telling you where are the important parts where we could be expecting a reversal. So the farther within the band we go, the greater the chance that and we have. By the way, uh, while you mentioned that, can we change the settings from uh, trend? Can we change it to reversal right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so a quick little tip here is that when you only use reversal, uh, we're going to be having green and red uh, flags. There we go. So now they're called reversals. Mm -hmm. And when you use them in confluence with a trend mode, the reversals will turn blue. And so this, mo uh, sorry, what was the name of this indicate the momentum? Uh... Momentum wave bands. The momentum wave bands, right? So the first thing that I notice about the momentum wave bands when using the reversal mode on the Oracle Pro is that the uh, that the reversal indication kind of gives you a heads up, and then the momentum uh, bands there they actually show you uh, the most likely bounce area. And so as I've just been using uh, this indicator, uh, you know, in the uh, in the month that I've had it. Um, I've, I've just found that it's very interesting to use that indication of a potential reversal in confluence with where the boundary of the band is. And I think it just uh, really helps you kind of visualize what's going on um, when, you're when you're planning um, your trades um, in a way that I believe that new traders especially can appreciate. Now, if you're more experienced, of course, you're probably using a lot uh, a, a lot more uh, sophisticated, you know, structural analysis. But, um, you know, this is, I've never seen anything exactly like this before. And I'm not sure what's going on in your calculation, but it's completely different than Bollinger Bands, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, so, so the yeah, I do find it interesting. And look at, you know, where your reversal points are. And they are, um, you know, it's it's just... It's just a nice. Uh, it's just a nice tool, you know. I like it visually. I respect uh, how it was put together. Awesome. Yes, I also use them a lot. So also, but maybe on the farther, on a more advanced uh, zone, I'm gonna be teaching you or showing you a couple of tricks on the reversals because there are three main patterns that I usually find of uh, confluence on these reversals. And maybe in an advanced class or in a follow up, we could be diving within them because it's a little bit extensive. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless. Yeah, uh, we could be looking at when we start having uh, like that green change right here, we start seeing that possibility of reversal. Remember, the more that we go within that cloud, the greater the chance we have. Then we have the critical band section in here. This critical section is telling you, you know what? This is like the highest zone that we could be expecting that reversal. And if we break it, most likely new reverse, I mean, previous support will become new resistance. And then we'll see what happened on that section. So, but so far, I usually tend to find when we are having that reversal zone, I'm looking for a reversal uh, cluster right in here. And based on that, I'll start taking my entries. Also, a very neat way to use those uh, clouds, it's also looking with that divergences that we have on the oscillator. Like for example, look at this divergence and then we go in here, we have a beautiful movement down there as well as we have that uh, divergence here within the bands and then we have a beautiful movement down there. And the same goes for the up, uh, operating section. So let me find something like that. So again, a uh, bullish divergence in the bands and then we have a beautiful reaction on those sections. So pairing them, with uh, uh, with um, divergences, they play out very very nicely. Also, right. what uh, I was are you going to be noticing? If you don't mind if I just interject something on yeah. that point? But what I was looking at uh, just while I've been using it uh, casually is um, 
you know, I don't, I'm not really concerned with when price action enters those, those bands on the sides, because of course, like we said, trend is your friend until the end. It just, it could continue, right? It can push through the band, you know, for all we know, it yes. just continue to go. But what I found was interesting is when it's confluent with those other indicators, like you mentioned, perhaps the oscillator at the bottom or other indicators of your choice, uh, when it exits, you know, after having entered the band and then it exits the edge of the band and comes back into the middle, that's when you really see that opportunity. And that tends to be a fairly powerful move in general. And of course, the reversal signal on the Oracle can give you a heads up to it. And then your oscillator can show you a point where you should be paying attention to. And then uh, the momentum band, when you exit it, actually shows you like a, a, an interesting entry in my opinion. Yes, absolutely. We also have something that adds to that shrimp factor, which is this lighting section right down here. So as long as you have that lighting section in here, down in the bands or up in the bands right in here, this edge, this clear edge that seems to be like a neon light effect, that is telling you that we have that trend uh, strong going on. Therefore, you could be expecting a little bit more move to the upside or to the downside. Like, for example, you can see that the stronger that we have that brightness on that um, on that band of that, let's just call it a neon light right there, the stronger the movement that we have, right? And we kept having it, yes, a little bit more thinner there, and we'll see it because we start having that reversal playing out. But as soon as we start picking up that momentum, look at that, the reversal, and it is telling you, well, we are not ready to change the trend. We are lighting this up so you can start having that more confidence that you could be tracking that as a possible reversal, and then we're not going to be breaking through that band. And as you can see, we're going back above on that one. Then what happens because uh, when we start breaking those bands well then the most important part before we start re, uh, we start considering the band as a support or the opposite band as a support or resistance we are going to be considering the inside of the band once we enter and close inside and bounce the first time let's take a look at our, our oscillator and look at that since here we are hovering above that zero line right and now we're saying that we are acting as a support now so that is a very very strong indication that we're going to be having the next big movement either to the upside or to the downside if we see the same thing happening on the lower section let and me see if i can find it bollinger here. bands there they may be very familiar with this type of concept of getting embedded on the bollinger, bollinger band right where you have maybe uh, you know two standard deviations uh, and you get embedded on it, it tends to indicate that a run is coming. And you can poke, you know, if you poke up through the Bollinger Bands and you poke down, but you kind of just maintain on that band, then it can you can consider there's the possibility of a run and you probably don't want to go against that trend. Uh, in the case that, uh, in the area that you just showed, we actually did poke our head down from the top of the band and it could be considered a fake out or a deviation to the downside. Um, yeah, right before that, just like literally the price action right before that circle. Uh, no, do you have to see the reversal? No, 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 go, go back. Yeah, that's too far back. <laughs> yeah, so right, right there. All right, no, the no, reversal? No. Right, right after it, right between that and the and the white area. No, 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 go forward. Oh. No, 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 you were in the right area on that side of the band, the other side, just to the right of it. We we pop down out of it. You see that green? It's dipping towards the middle. Oh, I see what right, you're right. saying. That's yeah, I'm the saying. fake out. Right. It's like a fake out or a deviation. And so you might think, oh, well, I can trade to the other side of the band now, right? But you have to remember that um, you just you literally just blew through the band, <laughs> right? So you kind of poked a hole through it. Yes. You see the you see the wick to the upside. And so even though you got that reversal signal. Your price action was really in the middle of the band, and you also already punched a hole in it. And so you, ha you have to understand that this was a very powerful uh, bullish move that just occurred. And so you don't necessarily, um, you know, you, you, 
you don't necessarily want to be over rash in just trying to trade side to side. Just like with the Bollinger Bands, you can get embedded on a side when you're showing a certain amount of strength. And so uh, I just wanted to point out a, a, a place on that chart where it wasn't just going side to side, right? And where you could have a slight fake out if you were thinking you're gonna come back to the middle. And how would you analyze that little deviation there? If you look at the oscillator, if you look at other indicators, how would you analyze that? The first thing that I will take a look at is what I have before. So the before section it is that I have a very strong reversal signal. And that played out, yes. Then am I above the dynamic reactor? Yes. Then I'll look at my prime score and to finalize it to have the very best uh, scenario, it is whether I'm above or below that zero line. I am above. And what is going to be selling my next possible entry? It is am I bouncing off that zero line? then I am going for that possibility of continuation. So that is basically what I'll be looking at. And that is not counting that I'm also looking at a white pattern playing out there or a possible bull flag, symmetrical bull flag or bullish pennant uh, playing out also. Right, exactly. And so that's exactly what I was expecting you to say. Um, and a similar principle exists when you're looking at the RSI, right? Because uh, some people may not be familiar with the Oscillator Pro yet, um, but if you're familiar with the RSI, there's a bullish control zone and there's a bearish control zone. And when you're in the bullish control zone, which basically is the upper half of the Oscillator Pro, then you don't necessarily automatically look for shorts. You're gonna look to see whether we had a breakdown from that zone. And so while we had a little bit of a pullback from the extreme bullishness that kind of broke up above the momentum band, we didn't actually break below the 50% point, right? Which would be the 50% point on the RSI. We didn't break below the zero point on the oscillator pro. And so that suggested we never really entered anything bearish, right? It was still showing strength by being above that zero line. Exactly, yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, would really you like me to maybe explain a bit farther? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at what is up next. I don't know what I keep clicking this dynamic uh, pro. So let me just then turn it off and then go to candle structure. The candle structure is very simple straight away. It will be we will be basically telling you what candle structure we have on there. So let's see. We have, for example, engulfing, and also we can start seeing those engulfing candles on morning stars candles, and also uh, that will be add to your. Um, to your analysis. Usually when I start looking at this kind of uh, indicators, I pair them with my dynamic reactor or most or even with my, um, my uh, here we go, sorry, my enable predictive ranges. So just so you know, predictive ranges for me, they are a big thing and I use them in confluence with my reversals. And we'll to be understand what that kind of pattern. in the uh, Dynamics Pro episode, which will be part three in yes. this series. So if you don't <laughs> exactly. understand what that is yet, I will explain it in the next episode. <laughs> yes. All right, so basically just giving you the heads up on that one and then very straightforward, very simple. So let's move into the next one here. So the prime ranges. I did went into talk about the um, the predictive ranges because they are a predictive tool. And then the prime ranges, they are the evolution of this predictive ranges. Let's take a look at why and how they behave. So I'm gonna start cleaning up all of my spaghetti here. And also let's take a look at what they are looking so they look like something that resembles to me the sea or the wind along some sailing zones right or something like that i don't know might be just me but the important thing here is that we are turning with the trend to give you a dynamic support resistance based on a predicted mathematical equation which means that we are not only predicting where the the, the um, uh, the price will be channeling in, but also the direction of the momentum that is holding. So basically, let me go to the last or to the end of this section to show you what and how it could be used. So the first thing is to understand when we start breaking through one of those predictive ranges, the most likely scenario is that we're going to be hitting the next one 
up, down there or up there, depending whether we're breaking to the upside or to the downside, right? So when we break through and we hold, usually the end up answer is that we're going to be hitting the next one. If by any reason we have a strong support uh, somewhere around here, which by the way, we do, and we do not end up uh, hitting the bottom, well, then we're going to be completely reversing and hitting the top of it. Let me show you a little uh, section that happened there. So we broke it up and then we found a resistance in here. So that resistance happened to be this one that in channel these two sections. So we bounced from it. Therefore, now I know that I'm going to be breaking it and then going to find the bottom of it. So it is a continuation of that reversal trend. So that is a very, very powerful indicator because it is not only telling me where am I going to be pulling to, but also in the case that I have some troubles in the middle, what is going to be the up next possible scenario? Yeah, and that's very interesting because uh, I see that there's gaps in it and it doesn't look like EMAs. I, I don't understand exactly what the equation is that you're using, but um, yeah, it's very interesting. In some cases, yes, it's another thing that parallel, you know, that these are not EMAs, right? So <laughs> something yes, completely different. Yes, they're not EMAs. No. Yes, they're predictive. So they're they're trying to predict where is it going to be moving the price up ahead. And there are points because we calculate per candle, we um we update the information. That's why you see them fainting out also like this because this one as we start moving downwards, this uh, requires less importance in that start switching. Also something very interesting is the coloration that they have, right? So as long as we start having look at that red we are still bearish and we could be looking for that bearish momentum or bearish zones or those bearish uh, uh, rangings, right? Or bearish ranges. But when we start seeing that they start changing of color, well then a move, an important move will be happening soon. So as you can see, we start losing that bearish momentum, start turning to the green one and then finalizing breaking into the green one so we start seeing that a uh, momentum shift from this section and we have enough space to look at our oscillator look at that a double bottom cluster at a reversal right at a trend assistant and because we already green we are expecting that farther movement so all of the stars are lining up and we get notice that note card right from here so we have enough chance or enough um time to prepare and engage in a uh, the best possible scenario for that reversal to play it out okay and then uh, i think we're getting uh, pretty uh, long in this episode so how about the uh, final points on the settings and then let's talk about the uh, print uh, prime screener absolutely so basically we already have gone all, all over this the uh, the last one that i'm going to be just wrapping it up is a prime trend assistance which basically is giving you assistance on the trend and also used as a middleman on those support and resistance as you can see initially the price rise in it and when we start changing of color is telling you hey watch it because we could be changing an early shift of the trend basically giving you the tip top of that trend shifting when we start reversing um and from that basically uh just to use in confluence your trend mode with your reversal or use them separately in a different layer find your pre your preferred tuning uh also take a look at your prime score for a very quick uh look through whether we're bullish or, or bearish and also your consolidation score to see how far into a range we are and how probable we are to start making or keep in within that range and then basically the rest of the tools which are the dynamic reactor multi-time frame reactor and this very neat addition for a predictive calculation on the trend so yeah that is uh, basically what I get. So I don't know uh, well, if you have you maybe some other questions. Thank you for the uh, Oracle Pro to us. Um, I do believe that on our other recordings, we left out the prime screener, though. And so that was one that I wanted to take a look at.
Absolutely. So let's go to the Prime Screener. And I got it right here because I actively use it. The Prime Screener, let me show you. I already have a couple of things playing out. And yeah, by the way, these cool are the coins. Tool, guys, that's why I'm asking him to add it into this, se this session. <laughs> Yeah, so I actively look in, and this is uh, one of the things that I'm closely following. This is the kind of like my checklist to start looking to take actions, right? So let me double click in there, and as you can see, I can select up to 20 assets. So I divide mine in between crypto, top to bottom, and then also from bottom to top, I start adding. Um, stocks and forex because i do also trade those assets but mainly crypto so as i start adding some coins i'll start looking at them so would you suggest me something that maybe you're looking at that you could tip me on on what to start placing my eye uh, i'm looking at your list and you're doing a pretty good job there so uh, let's just <laughs> go ahead and use your list just to save time because we are uh, fairly long in the episode yes. but uh so i see you have bitcoin solana link uh engine ethereum uh python i think i think is it python anyway pith uh yes <laughs> again and then you have op and rune oh. so can i ask you a question just uh first of all i see the prime screener can you can you point to it with your mouse just so people are making sure what i'm looking at um i see the the uh, prime screener here and it's telling me that uh, there's a, a buy trend and that the reactor is bullish. Now, the question that I have for you is, what is the uh, time frame on it? It is a time frame that I'm at at this current time. Okay, so if I go, if you go to the uh, one hour, these signals are all going to change. Yes. Okay. Is there any way that I can set that time frame myself so that I can always watch Seoul? on the four hour, or I can always watch it on the daily. At this point, we don't have that fixed into our indicator, but that will be a great addition. Although on the prime screener, we are running very close to our uh, RAM limit that trading view it's allowing us to use because we are multiple tracking multiple things on different assets at the same time. Right. But let so me so uh, bring it to the developers to see what we can do about it. Right, and there might be a you know a prime screen or ten. How many assets are you allowed to have on this one? Like twenty of them, I believe. Right. Exactly, you, we are up to twenty assets. Right, so you might have one that's called like prime screen or ten. You know where you can choose the time frame, but you can only have half half as many um, assets or something like that. Because I would rather look at, I would rather have, uh, you know, the pulse of the the uh, charts that I'm most interested in uh, running on the time frame that I want them to be running on um, when I look at it at a snapshot at any time you know um, I don't necessarily need to see the chart that I'm trading on for some other asset because it doesn't really um, unless I'm using just like BTC as confluence right or I'm using a stock as confluence or something or the stock market as confluence. Um, that may be a use case for it where it needs to be fixed to the same time frame uh, because maybe they trade together. But if I'm going to use this prime screener just to watch some assets that I may be having in the back of my mind and then suddenly I see it's all bullish or it's all sell or something, I may want to check it out on the time frame that I have. And so I'm not sure uh, what was the concept when this was developed, but that's just something that I would like to use it for. And so if I could change the individual time frame, and um, you know that would be really useful for me, um, as opposed to, for example, the the candle column. Maybe I can see the time frame or something. You know, um, that would be useful. Right. Um, and then also, Absolutely. I wanted to point out. Uh, if can you close the um, close the uh, settings box? Like this this chart prime vertical thing. That again, like I I just really don't like those type of graphics that just take up space for no reason. Um, you know, if you pay for it, <laughs> you know, it's chart prime and it doesn't need to be advertised right. to you like that. Um, it's great for demonstration or something, but if you like to have that, uh, please give us a toggle to take it off so that we can reclaim some of our space because every ounce of, uh, chart space is just really precious. Right. So. 
Absolutely. That would be my feedback. <laughs> Although it's it's pretty, but great. Um, yeah. In my way. That's all. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. I ain't that. completely um, understand. I love I love this type of tool. I love the um, you know, the status box that you have the status boxes that you guys have developed and this uh, suite of products. And I really appreciate that you've developed them for um, especially visual traders, right? Um, there are a lot of kind of um, logic and kind of math and kind of abstract traders and they really you know they really focus on the uh, the candle structure very highly but then there are a lot of traders who are just visual traders and they use fractals they use patterns there's many different ways of trading and i believe that a chart prime is very friendly to both and as we've seen um, for example uh, when we go over the dynamics pro there's a lot of options for um for example, smart money concept traders, right? There, there are different um, indications and different settings for all sorts of different traders. So I just wanted to appreciate that. And thank you for going over the uh, Oracle Pro with us. If there's anything else that you would like to add, now is the time. Otherwise, um, we can just wrap it up. Absolutely. What I use, use uh, the Prime Screener is to start taking uh, some trades without even going into the chart. So I use it something like a counter indicator. Like, for example, you'll see that I have my buy signal and then I also have two uh, check marks here, right? And I'm bearish. So that means that my buy signal has already played out on my second possible taking profits. And since I'm bearish, I could be now reversing uh, to the downside. So I'll be looking for possible link for a short. And then I'll also be looking like, for example, and the next one is Ethereum. The buy signal only have one check mark. I'll be waiting for a second check mark and also be bearish. And then my reversal says up. So I'll be waiting for a possible down reversal for, in order for me to take a short or something. So that's how I use it to give me a uh, like a flash look on what could be my next opportunity on when am I very close to possible uh, to possibly getting to an entry on those uh, important um, trades that I'm following up. Right. And that makes a lot of sense, but only if it's uh, applicable to the time frame that you're on. But if you're looking for a particular trade yes. that you want to watch for, just consider the time frame. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, okay, uh, guys. And by the way, that chart screener is uh, separate from the Oracle Pro, but all of these come together in the same suite, correct? Yes, exactly. Right, Oracle Pro, Dynamics Pro, Screener. And uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you again, OC Guy. Of course, uh, we're going to also put out a part three that goes over the Dynamics Pro, and that'll be the uh, conclusion to this. I'll probably invite OC Guy to give uh, some talks if anyone's interested, and we can also have fo uh, follow up. So if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and put them in the uh, comments underneath this video. And uh, OC Guy, as I always ask you to do, can you take a look at the uh, Chart Prime website? and just uh, remind us of the sale that you have going on. And then, of course, I will uh, include a, an affiliate link uh, with this um, video in the uh, description so that you guys can support this channel and our server. Absolutely. Very important to uh, take a note and that we, if you click buy here, you'll see that we offer a seven day money back guarantee, which means that you are paying for the, whatever package you are, you want to. And then if for any reason, for any reason, you don't like it, you decide not to continue within the seven days. We no questions asked, uh, no hassle free. We'll be giving you back your the hundred percent of your money that you pay for so far we have a holidays uh 50 percent off for monthly uh applicable for your first month uh you quarterly we have a 30 percent off applicable for your first quarter and then we have our best so far um premium yearly that is a uh, 489 one payment but is equal somewhere around 40 bucks a month which is uh the cheapest of them all uh based on on the in time and time and price yeah we're holding that one make sure to click on alpha sky's link so you can take advantage of that uh of this uh codes that we offer
Yeah, and I have a good relationship uh, with these guys, AlphaFam. So again, you you have that opportunity for a risk-free uh, seven days. And if you have any problems, uh, just let me know, and I'll talk with the OC guy, or you can uh, bring it up with them directly. Um, they'll take care of you. And uh, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, OC guy, thank you again for your time. Uh, thanks to uh, Chart Prime. And uh, that's your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.